All right, welcome back everybody. Here are some really scary findings. Statistics show that one in five kids has a mental health problem these days. There is a 43% increase in ADHD, 37% increase in teen depression, and get this, a 200% increase in suicides among children 10 to 14. So could bad parenting be to blame? A recent blogger said today's kids are not getting enough limits and guidance and is causing what she calls a silent tragedy. She says psychologists and teachers know that it's true. We decided to ask one, Dr. John Duffy, for his opinion on this topic. Dr. Duffy is a clinical psychologist, a national speaker, and author of this book. It's The Available Parent. So we're going to dig in. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, Great guys. Great to see yeah. you. I know we, that you don't want to be critical of parents. None of us do. But we're going to kind of put you on the spot here, and we're going to basically talk about it. Do you think parents are to blame in some of these cases and for this new batch of problems. Do you think there's truth to that statement? I think there's some degree of truth because we all know that our kids are under a whole lot of stress right now, right? Um, academic stress, uh, extracurricular stress, stress related to social media that we don't even purport to mm -hmm. understand at all. We don't know what Snapchat is, for example, and just showing up socially. Yeah. And as parents, we want to be as supportive as we can but sometimes the language we, lose, we use is disempowering mm. to our kids mm -hmm. and, um, and is fear-based. And so we're kind of like laying our fears onto our kids. And I think that sometimes, very often, can really play a number on the kid's psyche. Mm. See, yeah. and I didn't really get that before, that placing fear on our kids. But yeah. I get it now because I think, for example, well, if I don't tell her you have to get really good grades or him, then what if you don't have an opportunity to go to a really good college? Right. That's my fear that I'm, sh that my kids aren't saying, I'm really worried I'm not going to get into a really good <laughs> They're college. They're not thinking about college. They're right? not thinking you know? about it, maybe. No. So we do it. I'm guilty of that. Right. And I think that's important for us. The first step might be recognizing that, hey, you know, I, my intentions are good, yep. but right. there are some things I'm doing. So let's talk about, generally mm -hmm. speaking, parents want to do the right thing. But it, it appears we're raising kids who are not mentally and emotionally healthy. Right. Because we are so focused on not just our own fears, but our judgments and our egos, right? We want to have that Yale bumper sticker on the back of the car, yes. right? And mm -hmm. so we end up working toward that instead of thinking about what really is the goal here. What most of us say we want our kids to be happy, fulfilled, competent, resilient, kind. but we're not kind, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not always working toward those goals because we're coming from this place of fear. So mm -hmm. what I hold parents' feet to the fire on is put your own fears at bay and really think about where your child is headed and how you best equip them to get there. Mm -hmm. Fear is not what most people come into my office saying they want for their kids. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they want them to be self and uh, self like independent, be yeah. able to self soothe Industrious. all these things. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So part of the pro problem that the author goes on to say is that parents are digitally distracted themselves. They're um, they're indulgent, so they let the kids rule the world, mm -hmm. and they also allow a sedentary indoor lifestyle. So they say that's part of the reason for these kids having struggles. Are yeah. those many of the I guess the precursors? Yes, to those and and we tend problems. to focus so much on those problems that we forget about what the solutions are. Mm -hmm. And so we end up talking um, at our kids and lecturing at our kids about what they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And we miss the whole element of modeling. So a lot of us will be couch potatoes saying, you know, like, you need to be out exercising. And, yeah. you know, we'll be on, you know. We'll be uh, checking our email. Right, right, right. And we're checking our <laughs> phones. We're working on the weekend. And right. we're telling them, you got to get outside. It's beautiful. Exactly. And we're playing Slingo or something on right. the phone. And they're on Snapchat. And we're like, you can't be on your phone. And yeah. if we just model and created a culture in our home that was healthy, our kids would follow suit. Lectures, they're not going to work. No. They're mm -hmm. not going to work on kids today. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. do, do kids in your office who sit on your couch and they talk to you about their problems, do they blame their parents? I mean, be honest. Almost always. Do they? Yes. Yeah. They the, can uh, identify uh, that. What they, uh, and, and by blaming, I mean they will cite their parents as being not really available to them. I can't really talk to them, so I have to go to my friends or I have to come here to therapy. So my advice to parents would be, be open as you can. Mm -hmm. Put your fear aside and really listen to what your kids have to say because we purport to know our kids' worlds, but we don't. We don't really know what they're going through. Is it enough to say as a parent, I'm here, 
I'm here to hear you. I want to talk, keep the community. I want to, you know, I want to be there for you. Is that enough? Even if sometimes you do those bad behaviors? That absolutely is enough. Yeah. If, if kids know I can go to my mom or I can go to my dad and I know they're going to be there. They're not going to be judgmental. They're not going to be afraid. And, you know, I might, there might be repercussions. There might right. be consequences, but it's not going to be the end of the world. And they'll hear me out. That's what kids want more than anything else is to be heard. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I feel like in, in terms of being available, and I just only learn this, so I'm not preaching. My son's 14 and he's not a talker. In right. the morning, if mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, wake up, should we clean your room? Should, what are you doing today? Well, that's not going to work. Right. But what I realize is if I'm willing to stay up later, because I like mm -hmm. to go to bed earlier, that's when he's super talkative. Yep. It's late at night when his sisters are somewhere else. He's just like nonstop talking. And I always think, oh, I want to go to bed or I've got to do the dishes or I got to go. And I'm like, well, if I make myself available yes. when he wants to talk, yes. sometimes it's that simple. It you is. Know? A, one, a couple of the fixes that this author says, and I'm wondering what you think about it. As, you know, they talk about, you know, have nutritious food, um, uh, spend an hour a day outside, the, the value of truly being outside mm -hmm. um, together, have a technology free daily dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Involve yes. kids in more chores. Uh huh. Um, set a consistent sleep schedule. Your thoughts? Um, all great stuff. If you can establish that earlier in your kid's life, that's great. Make inroads if it's a little later in life, but you don't want to micromanage your kids to such an extent that they never learn to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. Remember, at some point, 17, 18, 19 years old, you're gonna be sending that child out into the world. If they don't know how to self-regulate, if they've never been challenged and you've done it all for them by creating this microcosm that's perfect, they're, they're not going to be able to manage the world outside. So don't take every Xbox and Twinkie away every single time. <laughs> Give them a challenge once in a while and let them navigate that. Learn to say no for themselves. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I like that. It's great. People can find out more about your book and more about you at uh, drjohnduffy.com. You've got great podcasts as well. And that's where people can find out more about all that you do and teach as well. Thanks really so good stuff. Thanks, guys. I love this topic. Thanks for being open to yes. it. Yes.